Hi everyone and welcome back to building websites in R with Distill. In today's tutorial, we're going to modify our navigation bar and then build the getting started page. So let's start off by checking out the R Girls website. So here we have the homepage of the R Girls website. As you can see, we have the home button on the left, the uh, tab for a blog, getting started, contributors, and lessons. Now the lessons, you can even see there's this cool drop down feature where we can go and check out all of the different lesson plans. So the first thing we're going to do is modify our navigation bar so it looks similar to this one. So let's minimize this and open up our studio. Okay, so I'm just gonna start off by building the website. And so here we go. So right now we have, we actually have two home buttons, which doesn't really make much sense. So we'll get rid of one and we don't have an about section. So we'll have to modify the entire navigation bar. Although this home button will stay. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is of course, load in our distill library. And now we're going to go to files and open up our site. YAML file. Okay, so straight away we can see our title says home and we also on the right side of our navigation bar, we also have another home button. So I'm going to delete this. You can comment it out if you want, but for simplicity, I'll just delete it. And you can see by default, the distill website will create an about page for you. So, so that's why we see this uh, information here, but we don't actually have an about section. So we're going to modify that this. So we're going to change it to say getting started. Whenever you're adding in a new tab to your navigation bar, you need two pieces of inf information. First, you need the text. So this is what is actually displayed on your nav bar. And the second piece is called the href. So this is actually an HTML file that we will actually create in a little bit. And this is pretty much just saying what information should be displayed on this specific page. So I'm just going to change this to say getting started. And again, we haven't created any sort of file called getting started.html. So this is kind of just like a placeholder for now. Okay, so let's just quickly build our website and see what this looks like. So now we have rather than about, we have the getting started tab. Of course, this link won't work yet because we don't have, we haven't actually created a page. So if you try clicking on it, you'll see that you can't access the file or the page. Okay, so, so that's great. We have our getting started tab, but now we're also going to create a lessons tab. Remember on our on the R Girls website, we have a getting started tab and we also have this cool lessons tab. And to do this one, because it is a drop down menu, it's a little bit more complicated. But what we have to do is first we're going to enter in the text for the actual tab itself. So the same way that we have getting started here, we will have lessons here. But now we have to specify that we want a drop down menu. And once we have our menu, now we have to add the, the specific different items again. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and make sure all of the tabs are correct. And just for these tutorials, I'll go through a couple of examples for the lessons. We're not going to recreate the entire website. Uh, this is just to give you an idea and give you the tool so you can create the uh, pages and posts on your own. So the first one we're going to do is my first R markdown lesson. And again, we're going to change this to a file that we'll eventually create called R markdown one. And the other one we're going to do will eventually be uh, math lessons.
Okay, so let's just build this quickly. Okay, great. So now we have our home, our home button, our getting started button, and a lessons with a drop down for two specific lessons here. Now I know on the actual R Girls website we do have a couple of other pages like a blog and contributors, but once you're if you follow along and you're able to build the getting started and the lessons pages, I promise you will have the tools and the knowledge to be able to create pages similar to blog and contributors as well. So that's why in today's tutorial, we're just going to focus on get the getting started page. And then in the next tutorial, we'll focus on the lessons pages. Okay, so let's go back to our studio. And I do want to point out one thing because I run into this a few times where it's really important to make sure that you have all of your spacing and tabs formatted formatted correctly. Just as an example, say I accidentally have one too many tabs for this menu. So I just did one extra tab here and I save it and now I try to build the website. You'll see that I run into an error straight away. So this can be a little tricky, but if you do ever come across an error message that looks like this, please take time to go through and make sure you have all of the spacing um, correct. Okay, so now if I just do that back and I rebuild the website, it should work. All right, so now that we have our navigation bar set up, we are going to create the getting started page. So to do this, we are going to come down into our console and we're going to use a function from distill called create article. And with this, we just have to tell it what we want our article to be named. And I'm gonna call it getting started. Okay, and now we can see we this created on getting started RMD file. So if we go to files, we can see this has created an RMD file for us. And just so you know, because I am planning ahead, this file name, the getting start, getting underscore, underscore started matches up with our href here for getting started. However, of course, you may notice that right now we only have our RMD file, but it will eventually, once we build our website, our RMD file will convert to an HTML file, which is what will eventually be read in here. Okay, but for now we're going to work on updating and modifying the getting started RMD file. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is change the title. And now there's a lot of other information you can add here. It's totally up to you if you want this information on your website. I recommend building the website to see what it looks like and playing around with it and deciding if you want this information. So I'm going to just comment this out and I'll keep the title, the date, and right now I'll keep the output as it is. All right, so that's what we need to do for the inside the YAML and now down here, this is what is the actual RMD file. So this is where we'll add all of the information that we actually want displayed on the website. And to do that, I'm just going to go to the R Girls GitHub and I'll just copy some of the information that we already have there. So here I'm just going to find the getting started.rmd. Okay, so all I'm gonna do now is copy some of the text that we have here and I'll just paste it in our RMD file. And now, of course, when you're designing your own website, you're going to add all of your own content and information. So that's kind of why I'm just doing this as a little demonstration. So I, before we build the website to see what this looks like, I want to show you that, remember, remember in one of the first videos I told you that all of the information to build the website is stored inside this docs file. So if we go to docs, we can see that there's an index.html, but right now there is no getting started HTML. But I just wanted to point that out because now if we go and build our website, 
uh, before we look at our website, let's go back to files. You can see inside our docs file now the RMD, the getting started RMD has now converted and there is now also a getting started.html. So again, this is the file that we need to reference here in order to have the getting started page appear on our website. Okay, so now let's go and check out our website. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit here. So now if we go to getting started, remember when we tried this before, it didn't work, but now we have our HTML file. So here we go, this is the getting started page. Okay, so that, this is looking really good. Let me just do a quick comparison with our getting started page that we just built and the getting started page on the R Girls website. Okay, so it's very similar, of course, but there are a few differences. So first of all, we can see this header is not pink. There's some double space, whereas this is single space. I like that the links are colored here um, and they're not here. And of course, we see this really cool feature of a table of contents. So these are all things I will go through step by step next. Um, I will say changing some of these details on the page, it's, it's a little bit technical and very specific. So of course, feel free to follow along if you wanna learn how to do that. If not, you can skip ahead to the next section. Okay, so to make the small changes here, like changing the colors, and changing the spacing, I'm just going to go back to the Our Girls GitHub page and navigate to the um, Our Girls theme. Because if we remember, if we scroll all the way down, we at the at the bottom of this page, we can see where there's additional custom styles. So again, there's a lot of information on this page. I am just going to copy the chunks of code that are necessary for us for this tutorial. Uh, so just give me one moment, one second here, and then I'll go through the code line by line. Okay, so now we're back in our studio, and here you can see I have the rgirlstheme.css open up, and I've just added in these three chunks of code that will allow us to make the changes that we want to the getting started page. All right, so let me just go back here. So the first thing that I wanted to try to do was change the header color from black to pink. Now, I was actually confused the first time I built this page and it wasn't pink because if you remember, in a previous tutorial, we went through and actually specified that the number one header should be pink, like that we have right here on line 80 to 83. So I didn't understand why this number one header because you can see right here, the one hashtag, this is telling, is identifying this line of code as a number one header. So I was confused why this wasn't pink. And for me to solve this problem, what I did was I went back to the website and I right clicked and went to inspect. So here you can see this is highlighted and it does in fact say H1, which is the number one header, but it's actually underneath this subsection called D article. So I thought that must be important and I did a little bit of research and after some trial and error, I realized that by adding this, so D article and then saying the H1 within the D article, now it will change the color to pink like I want. So you can see this D article information is the same for all of the changes that we're making here. Okay, so this first one is changing the header so it's pink and it's making it size 38 font. This next bit, this next bit of code, all this is doing is saying, as I have here, as I've written here, it's just setting it for a single space for the lists. And and to do that, all we're doing is saying this parameter, the margin bottom is set to zero. So there's, there's no margin, there's no spacing in between the different bullet points. And finally, the D, A, the D article A, this is just saying for the links to be set to this pink 
color. All right, so with that being said, let's just build our website again and check out the changes. So we'll go to getting started. And here, now we see we do have our pink. We have the pink coloring here and it's single spaced because right, these are the bullet points that we've set to the single spacing. All right, awesome. So the very last thing we're going to do is create our table of contents. And again, to do this, let's go back to the R Girls website on GitHub and go to the Getting Started page. And I'm just going to, again, copy this code here and we'll go through it on our studio. So over in Getting Started, I'm going to delete this output line because I'm actually going to paste in a new output line. Okay, so we still have our output is to distill, but now these three lines of code are what, this is what's creating our TOC or table of contents. Okay, so we can build our website once more. So we have TOC equals true. And if we open this up and go to getting started, we can see that if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that this is our number one header, but I have it also set to display the number two headers also, right? So you can see it's slight, it's indented one space to show that our number one headers and then our number two headers. So that's what we have here. The, the depth of the table of contents is set to two. And I have the float also set to true. Okay, so let's just once again, look at our getting started page. And okay, and the last thing I did want to quickly point out or show you is how to embed a YouTube video. And to do this, I'm going to just go to the YouTube Hi, channel. Hi everyone, welcome to... Okay, we don't need to play that. <laughs> and if you go to share, so whatever YouTube video you want to put on your website, you can find it and then click the share button. And embed is what we want to, to choose here. And now you can see that to embed the video, there is what we call an iframe tag. So this is the information that we need to put on our website. So we can just click copy and go straight back to our getting started page. And you can see even here, this is the iframe that I have, but I'll just show you how easy it is to add it in. And I think for some reason uh, before I deleted this information, but you don't have to, if you build your website with this, it will work and your video should display. But just to show you exactly what I had before, I also made the height slightly larger. So I had 400 and now it's exactly the same. Okay, so we don't need both of them. And if you build your website, you'll be able to see your video. So we will do that once more. And, and cool. Okay, so now we have our getting started page all set up. And the, of course, as always, the last thing we have to do is push all of our changes uh, to GitHub. So we're going to go to shell, git, add dash a and again that will stage everything and now we can commit we want to leave a message and finally push all right so that is everything that we have for today and as a reminder, in the next tutorial, we will go through and build the lesson pages to show you how to create some of those posts, which are slightly different from the page that we just built today. So stay tuned for that. And I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching.